Welcome back everybody. We're nearing the end of this twin turbo build and today we're going to tackle the vacuum part of it. And for those of you that don't quite understand how the vacuum system works with a turbo system, um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on, on how it's supposed to work. And it's really not that complicated. Um, there's a little bit more to having a twin turbo set than a single. Um, but the difference is minimal and I'll kind of explain it to you. And we're just going to jump right into it and I'm going to show you what I'm using. And I know I'm trying to sound like a professional, but I'm not. <laughs> and um, I haven't done a whole lot of work on, on turbo sets, but the, in all respects, it's not, it's not difficult to understand. And I'll, and I'll show you. I drew a picture. An artist I am not, but here's my picture. So with a twin turbo setup, we're gonna, and I'm only using one uh, Mac valve, which is this guy. That's how we're gonna control the boost. The ho this will hook into the Holly system. Because we're only using one, we're just gonna cap off the pressure side of the one turbo because uh, it's, it's the best way to do it. You don't wanna have variable pressures coming from one side, not the other. The pressure side, you're gonna run, it's gonna tee off. One, one side of the tee is gonna go to your number one port. Okay, that'll focus. That's the number one. Number two is on this side. Number three is right here. The other side of your tee is gonna come around, it's gonna tee off again and go to the bottom, the bottom port on both wastegates. You want to hook your pressure side into the bottom. So right from the turbo, you come around into the bottom is essentially what you want. From the other side of your valve, your, like your boost controller, you're going to come out, tee off, and you're going to hit the top side of your wastegate. Actually got one top right here. You're going to plug that into the top. And essentially what happens is, as you start building boost, the pressure comes around into the bottom and starts to push the gate open and you release your pressure. The boost controller, which I'm gonna have mounted to the wall, the firewall, as you, as you want more boost, that boost controller is gonna let more pressure by into the top of the gate and push it back down, making more boost. It'll keep that gate closed. So it's really not hard to understand. Put it this way, if you want maximum boost, take this hose, plug it into the top. That'll force the gate shut and <laughs> you're gonna see all the boost. You're probably gonna see all of your internals of your engine on the ground as well, because I know my motor can't take all, all that. But we're gonna do it the conservative way, not the reckless way. <laughs> And we're gonna to stick to this little diagram that I drew up. But uh, the vacuum line I'm using is a 730 seconds. And I, I didn't grab 50 feet, this is just 30 feet. And I'm gonna see if 30 feet can do this, this whole uh, setup for me. I'm using a single Mac valve. I just got some assorted tees. I'm sure like a brass tee would be better, but this is what I had. So that's what I'm gonna use. Dome pressure switch. I've got a dome pressure switch I gotta put in. This is what's gonna tell the the, uh, the Holly system what's actually going on. It needs a, it needs a reference to, to go by. So I've taken the top off this gate because that dome pressure switch has to go into the top of the gate. And uh, the problem I ran into with these Rev9 uh, waste gates is this is the size of the port in the top. I'll show you on this one. You know, it's got it's got where your vacuum line hooks into, but it's also got these second ones here. Those guys are too small to put this in, and that's a one eighth. That's a one eighth uh, thread. It won't fit. So 
what I did was I drilled it out and tapped it one size bigger. You have to be careful not to go too far in. So if you have a tap and die set, 11 30 seconds bit. Here, I'll show you on the reference chart. This was actually the size. It's a 1 8 by 27, and it tells you to use an 11 30 seconds bit. So that's what I did. I drilled it out, tapped it with my bit. And now, now that'll fit right in the top of the gate. And it only goes in the one side. Pick a side, doesn't matter which side. In case you're wondering what vent number three is on the, the Mac valve, this actually came with a little vent. And that's all that does, is that just vents the pressure. When you no longer need that amount of boost or it has enough in it, it, it vents it out of there. You know, so you got your in, you got your out, and then you got your vent. That's how that works. But these guys, I have to figure out how I'm gonna mount this. They sell a mount for these things, but the mount for these things is like another 20 bucks. And uh, I figure, I wasn't really thinking about that when I bought this, that I had to figure out a way to mount it. But uh, I'll figure something out. I might just zip tie it down out of the way where you don't see it. I'll figure something out. Okay, so I've been working away for about 45 minutes here and I'm pretty much done. It didn't take uh, much to get this knocked out. i show you where I put my Mac valve. I put it right there on the firewall and it's pretty easy to mount. Uh, two little bolts, I'll show you. Just small bolts like that. Fit in the, uh, there's two holes there's two holes I was able to utilize and I didn't have to buy a mounting bracket. I was able to just screw it right to the firewall. So I got my pressure coming from the turbo down here. I've got it run up along the top. I have it teeing off to the bottom of the wastegate here. I have it hitting the port number one on that side over there. And then I also have it teeing off, coming around, hitting the bottom port on this side. Then I did the top, like I did the coming out of the Mac valve. It tees off behind the intake, comes around up to the top of the gate. That side comes around to the top of the gate. And that's all there is to it. Now, blow off valves, it, whether you have one or two, it doesn't really matter. The blow off valve is very simple. When, you're, when your valve closes, valve, <laughs> when your throttle plate closes, if you're on the boost, all that boost pressure, all of a sudden it has nowhere to go. So you have all that boost still stuck in your charge pipe. And instead of blowing off a coupler or damaging a turbo, you need that pressure to go somewhere. So you're supposed to hook in behind the throttle plate somewhere in the intake. Now these ports were all a little too big for me to hook onto, so I had to use the one at the back of the intake. I hope that's okay. So I just ran a line up from the back of the intake, around, down here, and then because I have two waste gates, or not waste gates, blow off valves, I just, I had to tee it into each one. But that's all that was. That's like the, the blow off valves are very, very simple. Just make sure you have it plumbed in behind, just somewhere behind your uh, your throttle plate. And that's all there is to that. So reality, this like to zip tie everything together, zip tie every single every single joint, wherever you cut a hose, you have to you have to zip tie it. Excuse me. This probably all took me 45 minutes. It, it, it wasn't hard at all. But uh I'm glad I got it knocked out. I got my sensor mounted, my, my dome pressure sensor. So I just got to finish wiring that up. But this was actually a very easy job to do. So just in case you're wondering how to plumb a twin turbo setup with a single three port Mac valve, that's how I did it. 
So we're nearing the end of this project and that was one of the few things left to knock out under the hood. And uh, next we're going to be tackling the gauge cluster. I'm starting to put everything else back in. Got part of my interior in. Got my seat belts back in. Getting this thing put back together. So that's it for today. Oh, in case you're wondering, I had about six feet of uh, a vacuum line left out of 30 feet that I started with. So 30 feet might be a good number for you to go with as well. You might come up short, but I feel like 30 feet was plenty for me. So I hope this helps.